Hello, hello. Thanks for joining in. And today we're in the garden. It's our first garden video of the season with actual plants in it. We're just at the end of May, beginning of June now. And our first thing is ready for harvest. And it's this beautiful chamomile plant. I love chamomile. This is one of my favorite um, medicinal flowers to have and edible flowers. Uh, it smells amazing. It smells like apples and hay. Sweet, um, but not overly sweet. We're going to be harvesting these specifically to dry out for tea. I like having it before bed. It's really helpful for help making you sleep or tired. And uh, they just make beautiful blooms. I mean, they look like daisies. So pretty. So I'm going to show you how I harvest them, what to harvest and what not to harvest, and uh, how we're going to dry them in the end. So. These guys are pretty much just perfect. This is a great flush of a whole bunch of blooms at once. So I'm hoping to dry a lot so we can have a big mason jar just to get us through the season and uh, maybe gift some people some. So let's get to harvesting. All right, so we're gonna get nice and close here to show you what you should harvest and what isn't quite ready yet. So the ideal bloom that you're looking for is one that is super flush. The petals, if you put your fingers behind them, they lay flat. This bloom is perfect for picking. Now, a bloom that's petals are pulled backwards, like this one, is a little old, so the flavor isn't gonna be as intense. So I would leave these guys. You can pick them if you don't wanna waste. That's totally up to you. And then a bloom that's not quite ready yet is one of these. This is a bloom that's just starting out. Its petals haven't even fully formed and opened yet. You're not gonna wanna pick these guys. I would wait until later and pick them in another um, batch. So we've got a few of these. There's not a lot. If you accidentally get these, that's not a big deal. But the best flowers that you're looking for is these full flesh blooms. So all we're gonna do to harvest is simply, and this is where you may get some of those flowers that aren't quite ready or a little old, is just rake your fingers through and pull up. And when we go inside, we can just cut off any excess stem. It is a little bit more bitter. But this is what you're looking for. And you're gonna harvest as many of these as possible this is gonna take me quite a while because we have quite a bit of blooms, so I'm gonna to get to picking. Now something else worth noting when harvesting chamomile flowers is you're gonna to wanna to do it when they're dry. So I wouldn't do it after a rain. Today is a really sweltering hot day here. We're actually in the middle of a heat wave, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this either, but these are at the perfect point for harvesting right now, so I'm gonna do it today anyways. This may put a little bit of stress on your plant and you may not get a second flush of blooms because of it. So I would recommend just on a regular summer day in the evening when the sun is going down or at the beginning of the day uh, after your dew has gone and they're nice and dry, that's when I would recommend harvesting them. And again, if you're looking for that flush little flower that's perfect and these will dry out so beautifully for tea. They make such a lovely tea. So that's my tip. <laughs> All right, so I've finished harvesting and it's worth noting that I picked as many as I could that were ready, but I still left some for our pollinator friends. I believe gardening is a symbiotic relationship and we should always leave a little bit for our pollinator friends or our wildlife. So I have left some for the bees and the butterflies but we have harvested quite the amount. And that's that, we have quite the basket full. It's a good, thick amount, deep. These are obviously gonna get smaller as they dry, so I'm hoping this is a large mason jar's worth, but we'll see, it was quite the amount. And then when there is a second flush on these guys, I'll come out and harvest a little bit more, but we've got a good amount right here that I'm very grateful for. So let me show you what you need to do to try them. Hello again and welcome to my kitchen. I know I said outside that this video is over, but I'm gonna show you how I'm actually drying these today. So this is really simple. It only takes a couple of steps. You're gonna need your flowers, just an extra discard bowl. And then I'm doing this on like trays that are mesh or baking cooling racks with paper towel just so there is room for airflow underneath. And it's as simple as this. You're gonna take your chamomile flowers out and you're gonna cut off any excess stem and face your chamomile flowers bloom down. 
If you're using a dehydrator, it's going to be the same thing. You want to get as much of the stem off as possible, so it's just the bloom itself left, so it's not as bitter and woody, because we don't like that in tea. And you're going to put them blooms down and give them room around each other to breathe, especially if you're using a dehydrator. Um, I will double check what the temperature is if you are doing that and put it in the description below. But otherwise, if you're doing it the old-fashioned way with a screen or a paper towel or dishcloth like I am, you're just going to place them down and get as much of that stem off as possible. This is important for quality control, just to make sure you didn't bring any bugs in that are going to be in your tea or dirt. Another thing some people do, and this is completely optional, is some people will rinse and wash their flowers prior. I'm not going to do that today because I know that we don't spray with pesticides here. We do have farm fields across the street, but I haven't seen them here at all this year, so I'm not really worried about any kind of residue of chemicals on these. Um, so I'm really just going to uh, filter them in terms of this is quality control, me going through each individual one, making sure there is no bugs or, or dirt or anything like sediment on them. Um, and this is an extra step that does take a little bit more time, but it's worth it because your tea is going to taste that much better. So I'm going to put these once I have them all laid out in our storage room that has no windows and no light and it's nice and cool because it's in the basement. And these are going to sit for a couple of days up to maybe a week or more. It depends on the humidity level in your home and my home. So I, was recommend, I would recommend every couple of days or every day coming in, giving them a little bit of a shake, moving them around to make sure that they dry evenly. This is really important for harvesting so that you get the most shelf life out of your product. So for these guys, I'm probably going to go in every day, just give them a quick shuffle and make sure that the entire bud is not damp anymore. There's no moisture left in it. They are completely dry. If you put these in an airtight container while they still are a little wet, you're going to end up having mold. These are going to spoil and all that hard work is going to be for nothing. So make sure that they are dry. It's better safe than sorry. I would leave them out even longer if you're unsure. There's no harm in that. Um, and just make sure that they are 100% dry by the time you are putting them in their airtight, airtight containers for long-term storage. Um, and then you can make whatever you want with these afterwards. Like I said, they make a lovely tea for before bed. They are so beautiful for that. They really help my family in specific sleep. I find it knocks me out <laughs> really hard. Um, you can save them for infusing oils, for um, lotions, lip balms, for different skin conditions. It's really great for anti-inflammatory. I would highly recommend looking up again the medicinal benefits of these. Um, it's just such a great flower all around. And I'm hoping that I will have a big jar of these. I have quite a bit in here. So this is going to take me a little while to get through and process and have these trays filled out. But I'm hoping we're going to have a really big um, harvest of them that will last us the year. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. They're just so beautiful. And it's such a great medicinal herb to have in your pantry. So once I have these trays fully filled out, they're going to sit for a while, like I mentioned, and you're not going to see the end result in this video, but I will show what they look like fully dried on Instagram. So if you're interested in seeing the final product, go follow me there and you'll be able to see what these beautiful flowers look like fully dried and ready for tea. So thank you for joining me today on harvesting our chamomile flowers. Go enjoy the weather and get out there gardening. Have a great day, friends. Bye.